Well, I thank God for this Lord's Day as every Lord's Day and for the blessed opportunity to just stand today, amen, and just set the, um, the, the course for uh, the main course today. Um, uh, you may notice that um, for the last few fifth Sundays, I've asked our ministers to, uh, to share, to come together and be part of the word for that day. Amen. Amen. And so we are even today. If you would notice Ephesians chapter 6, we're going to read the text, which will save them from needing to read this whole text. Amen. They already gave honor to God. And to all of us standing here, they did all, they've already done all they're giving honor to. They got just a few minutes, and they don't have time to be giving honor to everybody. They need to go on and say what they got to say. Amen. And they know that. They know that. I'm just telling you so if they get up and don't do it, you won't think they're out of order. Because, you know, in, in some traditions, if you don't do your giving honor to, they won't listen to you preach. <laughs> Some people think, think I'm wrong because I don't pray before I preach. Amen. Many ministers do, and I don't call them wrong, but I don't need to pray when I get in the pulpit because I pray all the way to the pulpit. So I don't need to get behind this podium and trying to pontificate to impress somebody that I'm holy. Amen. I'm broken, but I got a whole word. Amen. So that's why I don't do it. Amen. Save that time for preaching. Ephesians 6, beginning at verse 10. And we're going to read, uh, we're going to read through verse 20, all right? And then I will uh, give you the order in which they will be coming, and they will come, and we will come forward. Amen? Amen, amen, amen. Let's read the word. Ephesians 6, 10 through 20. May we read. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand. Stand, therefore, having your loins girded about with truth, and having on the blessed breastplate of righteousness and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints and for me that utterance may be given unto me that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel for which I am an ambassador in bonds, that therein I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. Praise the Lord. And so from this um, passage that we usually refer to as the, the, uh, the whole armor passage, amen, the, um, they will come forward in this fashion. Mr. Talbert will come forth sharing with us on truth and um, Minister Wright on righteousness, Prophetess Major on the gospel of peace, Elder Furman, faith, uh, 
um, Evangelist Gothi on salvation, Evangelist Jackson on the sword of the spirit, Prophetess Holmes on prayer, and I'll wrap it up with watching. Amen? Amen. Let us hear. This is one meal now. These aren't lots of different sermons. This is one sermon, one message. Amen? God bless you. Let's press, bless God for them as they come. God bless you. Truth, know thyself. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God, and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ, and having in a readiness to revenge all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. Truth. The essential foundation of the Christian believer's faith is also the principal and most significant part of the spiritual armor that is dispensed by Father God into the lives of Christian believers to pull down strongholds. Truth, the word of God, is the power and authority that shapes and attaches itself to every piece of the spiritual armor fitted to our flesh by the Lord to meet our spiritual needs as believers. Truth. Knowledge of God operating by the spirit of truth within his saints to rebuke carnal behaviors, ungodly imaginations, and spiritual idolatry. Truth gives believers direct access to the throne of grace and mercy, thereby he, the spirit of truth, encourages, strengthens, and empowers saints to withstand the ongoing spiritual battle designed in Satan to destroy our eternal hope in God as citizens of his kingdom who are yet living on earth. Fundamental to every believer's ability to be victorious over sin, lust of the flesh, lust of the eye, and the pride of life are three spiritual truths that must govern communications, activities, actions, and deeds from day to day. Knowledge of God, knowledge of thyself, revealed knowledge by the Spirit of God. Let us not be deceived. The Spirit of truth does not abide with believers who willfully choose to practice carnal, lust-filled behaviors naturally desire and assertively conform to immorality, spiritually attempt to serve both God and mamma, fitted by God. Spiritual armor covers the flesh of saints on earth who are filled with the knowledge of God by Christ Jesus, the Son of God. We represent godly character and manifest teachings and proclamations to cause human repentance before God in the spirit of humility. We desire for the world to know Jesus Christ, the Lord's salvation. We instruct righteousness on earth with the readiness to revenge all disobedience by the miraculous power of the Holy Ghost. Let us make no mistake. The spirit of truth within us is dutimous, sent forth from Father God by Christ Jesus through the Holy Ghost to impart knowledge of God, truth, into the hearts of human flesh to produce obedience. No obedience yields pre no presence of truth, which equals no spiritual armor. Jesus, who is the way, the truth, and the life, is also he who positions the saints to do Zaius work, Zaius good works. Unlike believers who attempt to serve God and mamma, Satan, saints who come to the truth, Jesus, to know him, are empowered by God from the crown of their heads to the sole of their feet with divine character, the supernatural armor of God. Be not deceived, liars, covenant breakers, idolaters, haters of godliness, deceitful workers, those who passionately dislike other people, transgressors and workers of iniquity are of the devil. They serve Satan. Influenced by the father of lies, no repentance before death, they will be judged by the truth at the great white throne. Truth be told, I stand before you as one who does not have it all together, but in the spirit of truth neither do any of you. However, as witnesses of the work of God in our flesh unto the fullness of obedience by Christ Jesus through God, together, standing firmly in truth with our spiritual armor endorsed by the Father, we affirm we are all a part of God's body. I need you, you need me. I pray for you, you pray for me. I love you, I need you to survive. I won't hurt you with words from my mouth. You are important to me. I need you to survive. Stand with me, agree with me. We are all a part of God's body. It is his will that every need be supplied. Together, in the spirit of truth, 
We stand against principalities, powers, rulers of the darkness of this world, spiritual wickedness against every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, truth. Good morning. I will be coming from Ephesians 6, verse 14, and I will be reading from the Amplified Version. So stand firm and hold your ground, having tightened the wide, brand, the wide band of truth, personal integrity, and moral courage around your waist, and having put on the breastplate of righteousness and upright heart. The title of this message, Put on the Breastplate of Righteousness. The breastplate of righteousness is the second piece of armor we put on right after the belt of truth. Now that we know what the truth is, we can fasten the belt of truth, and we act on by putting on the breastplate of righteousness. It is essential, and it because it is a part of God's character, and we need it to become like him. The, breast, the breastplate was worn by the Roman legions was essential because it covered the thorax, a Greek term indicating the chest or the trunk. The breastplate protected the soldiers' vital organs, such as their heart and their lungs. It was fitted with loops or buckles that, attached to a, that was attached to a thick belt. If the belt was loosened, the breastplate slipped right off. No trained Roman soldier would venture into battle without putting it on. The Apostle Paul used this understanding to teach the right, the important spiritual lessons. He said believers must put on the breastplate of righteousness to protect the vital parts of the inner man and his faculties against the attacks of Satan. He uses the past perfect tense verb, having put on, suggests that this was a piece of armor that was needed to be put on before we went to battle. It is also important to remember that the breastplate is connected to and held in place by the belt of truth. The breastplate of righteousness becomes an added layer of protection as we make it our heart's goal to remain in, in close fellowship with the Lord and obey his command. We must refuse to let our hearts be captured by sinful passions and demonic temptations. According to Isaiah 64 and 6, our own righteousness acts are no match for Satan's attack. We put it on, the breastplate of righteousness, by seeking God and his righteousness above everything else. According to Romans 3 and 10, as it is written and forever remain written, there is none righteous, none, of that, none that meets God's standard, not even one. We are righteous not because of anything we can do, but through Christ and his perfect and complete work. He took our sins and thus departed his righteousness unto us through his crucifixion and resurrection. So righteousness begins and ends with God. Our righteousness is worthless in battle. This is why we need the breastplate of righteousness. We receive the righteousness of God by faith alone and Jesus Christ alone. So why do we need the breastplate, the breastplate of righteousness? One of the most common ways Satan attacks us is by going after our hearts. He knows that if he gets our heart, he can inflict a mortal wound. The heart of scripture represents our inner being, the essence of who we are, the seed of our emotions, self-worth, and trust. When we take in scripture, we want to renew our minds and transform our hearts, not just because it keeps us alive in a physical sense, but in a spiritual sense, it is from where the desire comes. If our desires are for the Lord and his will, that we make decisions that are good and right. We choose to tell the truth instead of lying. We choose to be kind instead of hateful. We choose to obey instead of disobeying. God gives us the power to choose right and do it. The breastplate of righteousness is not just something God gives us to wear. It is also something that he wears himself. And as in Isaiah 59 and 17, we read that God wears righteousness as a breastplate. Now you may be thinking, God does not need to guard his heart against sin. So what is he doing with the breastplate? Jehovah Sikhanu, the Lord, is our righteousness, is righteous to the core of his being. It is one of his essential character traits. My guess is that he wears the breastplate of righteousness because he has the right to do so. It belongs to him. The more I thought about this, I can only imagine and believe that Jesus was wearing the breastplate of righteousness when he was tempted by Satan in the wilderness. 
He was tired, he was tired, alone, and hungry, and most vulnerable. The devil's temptation focused on three crucial areas, physical needs and desires, number one, two, possession and power, and three, pride. Hebrews 4.15 says that Jesus faced all the same testings we do, yet he did not sin. The Lord takes sin seriously, and so should we. In our fight against sin, we must put on the breastplate of righteousness because it will deflect the enemy's attack. The more we become like God, learn what he expects, and do his command from the heart, the less easily we'll be deceived. So when Satan tries to make us think that God rejects us, we can resist them by remembering that God loves us and accepts us. Someone will be wondering, how do I get this breastplate of righteousness? The answer is, you must receive salvation through Christ. You, can earn, you cannot earn or buy the breastplate of righteousness. It is the free gift of God to anyone and everyone who simply and only believe in Jesus for it. From the moment you are saved, you are accepted by God the Father. For when he looks at you, he sees the righteousness of his Son. As Christians, we need to be intentional about how we live our lives. The kind of life you live is important. It will either make it easy for Satan to attack attack you or harder for him to defeat you. We must pray and ask God to help us choose right every day. Putting on the breastplate of righteousness every morning, you choose to live according to the new life that God has provided in Jesus Christ by the Holy Spirit. But what we must do is put it on. God bless you. Bless the Lord. And the peace of God. There's a song that I won't sing. I've got peace like a river. I've got peace like a river in my soul. The peace that I'm thinking about is not the absence of war, but it's tranquility, it's calmness, it's freedom from fear. Peace I leave with you, as we see in John 14, 27 from the Amplified. Peace I leave with you. My perfect peace I give to you, not as the world gives do I give to you. Do not let your heart be troubled, nor let it be afraid. Let my perfect peace calm you in every circumstance and give you courage and strength for every challenge. In this verse, Jesus is reassuring his disciples about his departure that they, with the aid of the Holy Spirit, will be able to effectively carry on when he leaves. The assurance is that he will provide a supernatural level of peace, but not as the world gives. Philippians 4 and 7 says, And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your hearts and mind through Christ Jesus. The Lord will eradicate the fears that we have in our hearts which includes our mind, it includes our will, and it includes our emotions. He refers to this peace as perfect peace. The worldly peace is circumstantial, and it's based on conditions, but Jesus invites us to a place of divine peace, to receive this invitation to come to Jesus and be yoked with him, joined to him, is very humbling, and it has its benefits. These things have I spoken unto you, says Jesus, that in me ye might have peace. That's John 16 and 33. It's in Jesus that we find our peace. Where the presence of the Lord abides, so does his peace. In the world we shall have tribulations, but according to the word of God, be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. The absence of peace is the confirmation of a lack of his presence. No peace, no presence of the Lord. In Isaiah, we are reminded, uh, for unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Uh, our benefits are that he's a way maker. He's a heavy load sharer. And again, he's a prince of peace. He is Jehovah Shalom. Hallelujah. Our peace. In Romans 4 and 17, 
says, for the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost and joy in the Holy Ghost. We should be a people who move in him and have our being. The Lord will give us rest and the peace of God. I want you to finish that. And the peace of God. Hallelujah. The Lord promises us that he will keep us in perfect peace if our mind is stayed on him. On the Lord. If our mind is stayed on the Lord, we shall have perfect peace. He says he will never leave us nor forsake us. Because our feet is shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. And I conclude with this, Romans 1 and 7. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I bid you shalom, the peace of God. One of the falsehoods that the enemy attempts to perpetrate to a newborn Christian is that once they give their lives to Christ and become a member of a local church, that all of their battles are over. Any Christian who has been saved for any length of time will tell them that just because we have accepted Christ as our personal savior and have become aware of the promises and protections that Christ has provided for us, there is an enemy whose desire is to sift us as if we were wheat. In the scripture text, the Apostle Paul informs the Christians of Ephesus that they will have battles in their lives. He continues by identifying who this enemy is. Paul identifies the enemy as principalities, powers, the rulers of darkness of this world, and spiritual wickedness in high places. In other words, he is teaching them that these powers are the powerful evil forces of fallen angels led by Satan. Paul continues by stating that we cannot fight this enemy as if they were flesh and blood. So he tells us to put on the entire armor of God, which is backed by a supernatural power. Now a vital part of that armor is the shield of faith. This faith will not only move mountains, but it will give us the strength to use all of the tools that God has provided for us in battle. So what is a shield? A shield is a type of covering, a means of defense, and, a, uh, and its purpose is to protect and to cover the individual who's under attack. Paul said, notice, Paul said, above all. Now these words above all can be translated as of first importance are the most important thing. So the first importance or the most important thing is taking the shield of faith wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. Our shield in battle is our faith. It is mobile. It can be moved from in front of us to behind us, from our left side to our right side. So when the enemy tries to blindside us by throwing dots of doubt and discouragement to the left or to the right of us, it is our shield of faith that we move to the direction of the darts to quench them. When the enemy attempts to backstab us with false doctrine in an attempt to make us backslide and turn us away from the ways of Christ back into a life of sin, it is our faith in God's word that becomes a shield and we move the shield to the back to quench the fiery darts. When the enemy attempts to stab us in the heart, 
in an attempt to place hatred in our hearts and not exalt the love of Christ, it's our faith, the shield of faith, that will rise up and cover our hearts. In order to accomplish this, we need supernatural power to defeat Satan and his army. And God has provided us this power through his Holy Spirit to assist us in using the shield of faith and quench all the darts of the wicked, regardless of the direction that they're coming from. So we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. For when the enemy shall come in like a flood, the spirit of the Lord shall lift up a standard against him. And the tool to that standard is the shield of faith. Praise the Lord. Salvation. A deliverance from sin. Ephesians, the sixth chapter, the sixth, sixth chapter, the 17th verse states, and take the helmet of salvation. Now in the Old Testament, lays the foundation for biblical understanding of salvation. The Lord made a covenant with Abraham, promising to bless all the nations of the earth through him. You find that in Genesis, the 12th chapter, the first to the third verse. Now this promise is another illustration of God's intent to provide salvation. Now God is holy and cannot tolerate sin. Amen. Praise God. Human beings are fallen and sinful. God initiates and provides always, always a way of salvation. And finally, people respond to God's offering of salvation. Now God is always the one who saves and redeems his people and redemption usually comes with a blood sacrifice. Praise God. Now in the New Testament, salvation by grace alone through faith in the person and work of Jesus Christ is the dominant theme. Now salvation begins with the initiation love of God. Now St. John 3.16 tells us for God so love, hallelujah, the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have what everlasting life. Now that's a God kind of love. Now God's eternal purpose is to save sinners through Jesus Christ's atoning death on the cross. Now, conversion is often the term used to describe when someone actually receives salvation. Yes. Now, this is the point when a person repents and believes. Yes. Faith and repentance are the condition of salvation, according to the word of God. Yes. In the New Testament, Mark 1 and 15, repentance yes. means turning yes. from self and sin to God and holiness, while faith is believing the fact about Jesus. Jesus let us know that I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man come to the Father but by me. Jesus Christ is the way. Now the saints eternal future is secure because not only does God initiate salvation, but he also preserves the saints of the Holy Spirit. Now, salvation is a free gift from God that rescues the believers from sin and its consequences, renews the believer to a holy life, and restores the believer to a right relationship with God for all eternity. Now, we can't purchase salvation, and you cannot inherit it. Now, St. John 3.16 tells us, for God sent not his son in this world to condemn the world, but that the world through him, no one else through him, might be saved. God bless. 
Amen. Continuing with Ephesians 6 and 17. And the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Fight on. Who shows up to a battle without a weapon? Let's make it personal. What kind of Christian shows up to a battle without a weapon? We live in a day where our adversary, the devil, has made it blatantly obvious that he is on the attack. It's as though he is no, that he no longer tries to hide the fact that war has been declared and his mind is set on fighting dirty. So I ask you, what kind of person would show up to a fight knowing that the enemy is dead set on using every underhanded, low-down, dirty trick in the book to steal, kill, and destroy? The problem is that many Christians do not hold God's word in high enough regard and are deceived, thinking that one can get by without getting into God's word for themselves. Consider Job and all that he went through. The enemy stole from him 500 oxen, 500 donkeys, destroyed 7,000 sheep by fire, stole 3,000 camels, then killed his seven sons and his three daughters and all the servants attending to this vast area except the three survivors. Even with friends trying to convince him that he must have done something wrong for God to allow this. In Job chapter 23, verse 12, he replies to Eliphaz, the Temanite, stating, Neither have I gone back from the commandment of his lips. I have esteemed the words of his mouth more than my necessary food. Job understood that God's word, which sustained him spiritually, is more important than what kept him physically. God's word is our only offensive weapon. Who shows up to a battle? with a weapon that they are not familiar with. In Acts chapter 19, we find seven sons of a Jewish priest attempting to engage an evil spirit. The problem was that they did not have relationship with God through his word, the Lord Jesus Christ. As a result, they not only lost that battle, they were humiliated after the spirit in the man wounded them, beat them out of their clothes, and sent them running. This is what happens when we attempt to engage the enemy and we have no word in us. We can pray and we can fast, but if we do not have the word of God in us, it will be like showing up to a sword fight with a butter knife. If we, if we only eat one spiritual meal a week on Sunday, then why does it surprise us that when we are spiritually empty by Tuesday, we must make certain that we feed on the word of God regularly. Amen. Why is the word of God also called the sword of the spirit? This designation reminds us that the battle is in the spirit. Not only that, but the spiritual battle, spiritual battles require spiritual weapons. The devil laughs at us when we attempt to fight spiritual battles without knowledge of God's word. But he is threatened by the Christian whose faith and knowledge in the word of God is sharpened daily. 2 Corinthians chapter 10 verses 3 and 4. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations, and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God. And where does our knowledge of God come from? The word of God. Saints. The word of God is our weapon that Hebrews chapter 4 verse 12 says is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. In other words, no weapon can stand against it. With it, we can stand against the devil. And we must learn it by heart so that we will understand how to fight and win. Bless the Lord. Prayer. Ephesians six eighteen says, Praying with all prayer and supplication in the spirit and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. Prayer is our spiritual communication between man and God. Prayer is man giving God the legal right and permission to interfere in earth's Sophia. God said to Solomon, 
in 2 Chronicles 7, 14, if my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sins and will heal their land. Prayer and the word of God works together. When Jesus was tempted by Satan in the wilderness, he used the word of God. It is written that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. To understand the principle of prayer, it is important and necessary to understand the mind and purpose of God himself, which is found in his word in his holy Bible. Effective prayer must be a spiritually informed response of persons saved by grace to a living God who can hear and answer based on Christ's payment for the penalty of sin. Prayer involves us having faith in God. Prayer involves worship, giving God reverence and honor. Prayer involves us making confession, admitting that we are guilty. Prayer also involves adoration, accepting God's love. Prayer involves thanksgiving, giving God thanks for everything. And prayer also involves us making our requests known unto him. And finally, our prayer must be effective. Prayer has power to over everything and anything the devil sends to us. In James chapter 5 verse 16 says, The effectual, fervent prayer of the righteous man availeth much. Prayer is not only our defensive weapon, it is our weapon of offense, according to Ephesians 6, 18. It enables us to wage war in the spiritual realm. Praying always with all prayer and supplication means that you and I recognize our enemy and we look to God for spiritual resources. We seek God for that which is spiritual that we may be filled with all the fullness of God that we are able to combat the enemies in his attack. Amen. Paul said in Romans 8:26, the spirit helps our infirmities for we know not what we should pray for as we ought, but the spirit itself maketh intercession for us with our groanings which we cannot utter. And he that searches the heart knoweth what is the mind of the spirit because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God. An effective prayer must be in the spirit. Our prayer makes a difference in how God responds to our situation and the situation of the world. Plead the blood of Jesus over the situation. Remember, there is power in the blood. There is healing in the blood. When prayer does not bring results, it is an indication that something is wrong. When prayer is not answered, the word of God will provide an indication of why it was not answered and give insight into the kind of prayer we need to be praying and point out what can hinder our prayer. God answers as soon as we ask, and he reveals those answers in his timing. Jesus told his disciple that men should always pray and not give up, according to Luke 18 and 1. Find scriptures that address the issues or concerns that we are praying about and pray the scriptures. Jesus said in John 14, 13, Whosoever ye shall ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If ye shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. Remember, we are praying in the name of Jesus, who is raised from the dead and now sits at the right hand of the Father in heavenly places, far above all principalities, powers, might, and dominion. And Satan and all his demonic demons and powers are under his feet. Philippians 2, 10 and 11 says that at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow of things in heaven 
things in the earth, things under the earth, and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Amen. Amen. You almost wish there were a few more pieces of armor. <laughs> Uh, I bless God for all the ministers um, sharing so powerfully. Um, the uh, verse uh, 18 um, concludes, it begins by saying, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit. And it ends saying, and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for the saints. So, um, in the midst of our praying, we've got to remain watchful. Amen. We've got to look at and observe things. We've got to be attend attentive to the time and uh, just what's going on. What's going on in, in, uh, in natural events that seem out of place, flooding and fires and all sorts of things. What's going on in Afghanistan? What's going on in your neighborhood and mine? Your home and mine? Your mind and mine? Um, watching means exercising care and exercising caution. Amen. Um, lots of times we, we endure um, accidents, really not because we are not good drivers, but it just takes one moment yes. of not watching, one moment of inattentiveness, one moment of distraction. And in the spirit, it is the same. Amen. Just a moment. Amen. You don't have to sit down and think on something crazy all day. Just be distracted for a moment. And uh, let your guard down for a moment, and there you are. It means, watching means to guard. Amen. To guard, to set a guard over things. Amen. Uh, it means to maintain an interest in. We watch over things because we maintain an interest in them. Amen. Living to please the Lord has to be a priority. Amen. Otherwise, you know, the, the word of God says that godly sorrow worketh repentance. And um, I can say I can say I repent, but if it isn't based on godly sorrow, if I'm not truly sorry, then the words don't mean anything, you know. Um, so we've got to maintain an interest in our relationship with the Lord. And these um, uh, items of armor all prepare us, amen, whether they be defensive items or the offensive item, uh, the sword of the spirit. Uh, it means to be alert for certain things. Amen. Amen. We develop certain sensitivities. Amen. Um, have you ever been around somebody who just said, something wrong? <laughs> and they didn't know exactly what it was or, or where to point to, but they just knew something wrong. Um, you could be working with people and, and, and all of a sudden there's a spirit in that place that says, uh-oh. There was a meeting before the meeting. Yeah, yeah, something wrong. The Lord, yeah, the, yeah. When you're watchful, amen, the Lord gives you those sensitivities. Amen, that something is going on, something going on. You know, you might not be able to say exactly what that thing is, but in your spirit, you got a witness that something is going on because you seek to be watchful. Why do we need this? We need this because none of us works, walks perfectly in this armor every second of every minute of every day. Amen. And so we need to be reminded. And I'm hopeful, hoping that I and others, as we heard these wonderful, amen, exhortations on these different parts of armor, have done self-examination. That's what I was sitting there doing. I was saying, okay, Lord, what about me with this piece right here? Lord, what about me? With, I wasn't thinking about a soul else. Lord, what about me with this armor? Amen. Amen. Am I ready to go out to war? 
Amen. What a butter knife. Amen. Uh, am I, <laughs> or is my breastplate half hook up on me? And it's going to fall off and exp expose my vital. You know what I'm saying? It's all important. And it's important for a constant review. That's part of watching. Amen. And, and the word says watch with all perseverance and supplication. That means you're watching. You keep on watching. Perseverance. Means you hang on in there watching. Amen. You watch when you don't feel like watching. You watch when you even think there ain't no need to watch. Amen. You just keep on watching. Amen. And supplication. You got to do all of that and then keep on praying. Amen. Stay before the How can I pray all of You can pray all the time. Amen. But it it's, it's means I got to develop my life in such a style that whatever I do, I can pray as I do it. Amen. Amen. That's whatever I do. If, you, if you're making breakfast, you can pray as you make breakfast. If you're taking a shower, you can pray as you take a shower. If you're driving down the road, you can pray while you're driving down the road. Don't close your eyes, but you can pray. You, you can, you can, you can, <laughs> but it means you got to develop that kind of lifestyle. You got to be attentive. You got to be ready with all supplication. Amen. With all perseverance and supplication. And he says, and for me, that the, uh, pray while you're praying for everybody else, pray for me, Paul says. And I say just like Paul says, while you're praying for everybody else, pray for me. Amen. That the utterance may be given unto me, that I may open my mouth boldly and make known the mystery of the gospel for which I am now an ambassador in, in chains. Can you imagine Paul doing this kind of teaching from prison? Amen. Sometimes I, I know, I know it's not what we like in our flesh. Amen. And I'm going right on into the invitation. Amen. But uh, I know it's not what we may like in our flesh, but I tell you what, we, we learn some of our greatest lessons in the Lord in crisis. We do some of our best maturing in the Lord in crisis. Amen. Paul was in prison. He was awaiting execution. And he was writing about putting on the whole armor. Uh, and some of us can't sit through church without talk, communicating with somebody out of church by, with a text. And, uh, we can't give God two hours. He, your life. People, I'm talking about lay down your life for the Lord. People don't do that. We don't lay down our lives two, two hours for him. Amen. Amen. And if you really want to see how much folk like to tarry in the things of God, hang around after the benediction. <laughs> Praise the Lord. No, I'm just joking there. Because we get built up here to go back out. There are battles waiting on every last one of us. Children too. You're going, you're going to school. You've got to listen to teachers. You've got to be obedient. You've got to deal with, with uh, schoolmates. You've got to deal with folk who don't want you to wear your mask. And your mom and daddy done told you to wear that mask. Amen. You've got to deal with teachers who will try to intimidate you about wearing the mask. Because they don't believe in the mask. Amen. It ain't easy. It's not easy. But it's worth it. It is worth it. I so thank God today for this teaching on the, on the whole armor of God. Let's bless God for these men and women of God who put the time in studying. Amen. And studying, studying the word wasn't the biggest challenge. Stewing it down was the challenge. Because any one of them could have taken the whole time just to expound on, on what they were talking about. So I appreciate not just the study, but the discipline in stewing it down and letting the Holy Ghost say, this is essential. These are the most salient points. Say this, say that. You can leave that undone. Say this, say that. Uh, you can assume that they know that. They know that, right? So just build on that. And I, I appreciate that so much. Thank you all so much for, uh, for that labor in the Lord. Amen. Amen. And now that the word has gone forth, um, there must be an opportunity for somebody to respond um, to the word. Amen. Um, if, if you're not giving your life to Christ, then you, the armor of God means nothing to you. 
you know, if you don't have a relationship, if you are in a backslidden relationship, then you know that there has been some deficiency in wearing the armor. Amen? Amen. And I think just about every saved person has known moments of deficiency. Amen. So I appeal to you today, if you're not saved, amen, today, now is the time as you hear Jesus calling your voice. And the wonderful thing about the Lord is he can call a million people's voices individually. He can call your name and call my name at the same time. Amen. And I'll hear him calling me and you will hear him calling you. So I encourage you today, uh, please, um, uh, if you are in a backslidden state, which means you did make an authentic confession and you did receive Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, but through time and conditions and decisions, you drifted from the word, the, the pursuing, amen, your relationship with Jesus Christ. And you believe the Lord is calling you to a point of restoration. Amen. Then please, now is the time. Amen. There are those who need a church home, who are saved, and you're walking in the power of the Holy Ghost. And you just need a church home. You need, and you, you need the Holy Spirit of God to lead you to where he wants you to be. And if this is that place, then now is the time. We want to know. We want to know if this is where the Lord has assigned you to be. If you're satisfied in your spirit, then uh, we just need somebody to come. Amen. 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 Uh, bless the Lord. Amen. You just got to be comf comfortable and confident in that. Amen. We're all works in progress. We're all works in progress. Amen. Amen. And we just thank God. Amen. For uh, Brother Steve coming today. Amen. Elder Furman is going to talk with you. Amen. Anybody else sitting at home on your job or amen in places of confinement, wherever you, you are, if you've been just floating around, floating around, looking for a landing place and the Spirit of God is saying, this is where I, I'd have you be. Then you, uh, when the benediction is given, uh, for 15 minutes, two of our ministers will be at the phones. Um, you can call and they will handle your spiritual situation. Amen. If you go to our website, there's a place on there if you want to um, uh, complete uh, information regarding membership. There's a place there for you to take advantage of that. We really want to hear from you. We really do. We really do. We want, we want to just be faithful to uh, receive all whom the Lord has assigned to this place. Amen. Please, please come. Please come. Please come. Amen. We're going to pray. Amen. A prayer. Uh, just believing that you are, um, that you will respond. That you have responded or that you are going to respond. I take this opportunity to also uh, pray for those who are who are awaiting or those who are receiving healing and deliverance. Amen. Amen. Um, Deacon James Peter Smalls asked for prayer, called this morning and asked us to include him in prayer. And um, there's a, a young person, I, I won't give any, any name, but um, persons in their 40s and facing a, a life-altering uh, physical situation. So just just remember that person that Pastor Doe talked about. Yeah, that person. Um, um, I'm trying to see if I'm... Amen. Uh, Sister Edna Glover, let's keep her in prayer. She did have surgery this past week. Um, Sister Annie Reeves. Sister Annie Reeves has two brothers. Two brothers who um, are ill. Um, and um, we just want to keep them in prayer and her in prayer as she goes to check on her brothers. Amen. 
uh, anybody else I may not be calling right now Josephus Smalls yeah now saints uh, just take a moment and give a little energy in, in your own space and pray for the unsaved Pray for the unconcerned. Pray for the unconvicted. Pray for the unconverted. Yeah, pray for them. Maybe a little prayer attention will be enough to make them pause and consider their spiritual well-being right now. Pray for that child that seems like they aren't ever going to change. Pray for them. For that exasperated parent who wants to just throw in the towel. Pray for them. Yeah. Pray for our people who put their lives on the line every day. Not just the people we generally refer to as first responders, police and fire people and those sorts of things but I believe educators are first responders, I believe medical people are first responders, they are first responders and I believe saints who are jumping into situations and, and standing in the gap for people are first responders, amen so we want, whatever the the area in which a person, the arena in which a person works or labors, we want to keep them in prayer today. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this opportunity to pray, God. We don't pray because we feel so qualified to pray. Lord, we pray because we know that you are a prayer hearing God. Not only are you a prayer hearing God, but God, you're a prayer answering God. In the name of Jesus. Oh God, we come to you because there's no other help we know in the name of Jesus. In the, on the earth, in the earth below, nor in the heavens above. There is no name that can do mankind any good save the name of Jesus Christ. Oh God, we thank you for your sovereign rule over everything. God, we thank you that you have everything under control. Things that are out of our hands. Things that we cannot do anything to impact. God, this is still your world. And you have it all under control. May we find out peace in that today, God. In the name of Jesus, God, I lift before you those who have made confessions today. First time confessions. Receiving Jesus as their personal Savior. I lift them before you today, God. May they feel your love envelop them right now and hold them close right now God in the name of Jesus I lift the backslider who said I need to go home and who realizes that home is always there God I pray for the backslider who's come back today in the name of Jesus oh God oh God then Lord I pray I pray I pray for that person who's just been floating out there who needed a home a covering that the decision has been made today whether here or elsewhere they have decided to hear your voice and heed your voice and go to the place to which they've been assigned. Father, in the name of Jesus, oh God, move by your spirit today, God. Move by your spirit today, God. In the name of Jesus, we lift the, the, those who are awaiting healing and receiving healing and deliverance, God. We lift all the names that have been mentioned already, God. Sister Annie's brothers and and uh, Deacon Small, James Peter Smalls, and Brother A. Uh, uh, Sm Smalls again, Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, I just I just lift all those and others before you right now, God. In the name of Jesus, Oh God, show yourself strong, Oh God, Oh God, Oh God, God. We know that we're not worthy to call on your good and great name today, but God, we come because you are the loving father you are and even if we tow up from the floor up God you still want to hear your children's voices we thank you today God oh God in the name of Jesus that at right time while we were yet sinners Christ died for the ungodly 
He had us on his mind. He had every mistake, every every error. He had it on his mind already. And he and he decided to die uh, rather than save himself, God. He decided to give us a chance in the name of Jesus. So now we confess and repent, Lord. Wash us, cleanse us, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Create in us a clean heart and renew a right spirit within us, God. In the name of Jesus. Oh God, we thank you today. Thank you, for, uh, thank you for a chance to participate in kingdom building today. Thank you for a chance to rescue the perishing and care for the dying today. Thank you for a chance to throw out the lifeline today. In the name of Jesus. With no judgment, Lord, and no condemnation. But nothing but the love of Jesus Christ. God, thank you for giving us the ability to tell somebody he yet wants to save you. No matter where you've been, no matter what you've done, he yet wants to save you. He yet has a plan for your life. Uh, he has planned for your good and for your prosperity. God, in the name of Jesus, oh God, build us up, us up right now in the name of Jesus. While we're praying for other folk, it's not just them, it's us too. We're standing in the need of prayer, God. Amen and amen, Lord. For one thing or another, we're standing in the need of prayer. Somebody has things going on in their body, Lord. Other folk have things going on in their mind, God. Some folk have things going on in their spirit, God. Some folk got home issues going on. Some folk got financial issues going on. Some folk got marital issues going on. Other relationship issues. Lord, whatever it is, God, move by, the, by your power, God. Bring healing among your people today. Lift up downcast heads. Encourage spirits today. In the name of Jesus, God, I thank you for the spirit of healing rising up right now, God. I thank you for the spirit of healing bringing wholeness, God. I thank you for the spirit of healing prophesying to the dry bones, believing that those bones can live again. I thank you for the spirit of healing that speaks until the, the muscles come on the bones and the flesh come over the muscle. I thank you for the spirit of healing that makes us not remember how bad it was, but start celebrating how good it can get. In the name of Jesus, move by your power, God. Dry up tears today, God. Encourage hearts today, God. In the name of Jesus, have your way, God. Have your way, God. Have your way, God. Have your way, God. Break every fetter. Set your people free today, God. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Free from worry. Free from doubt. Free from fear. In the name of Jesus. Heal today. Heal today. Heal today. Heal today. Glory to God. Heal today. Heal today. Heal today. Heal today. Have your way, God. Have your way, God. Have your way, God. Have your way. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Thank you. Oh, oh, see, yeah, my Oh, 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 God. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. Finish that work, God. Finish that work. Finish that work. Finish that work. We lift the name of Jesus. We exalt the name of Jesus. We magnify the name of Jesus. And we do it knowing that there's a promise attached to lifting the name of Jesus. Because you told us, if Jesus said, and I, if I be lifted up, I'll draw all men. Thank you for healing. 
Thank you for healing. Thank you for healing. Thank you for healing. Thank you for healing. It's Ina. Thank you for healing. 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 Thank you for healing today. Thank you for healing today. Thank you for healing today, God. Thank you for healing today. Thank you for healing today, God. Thank you for healing today. Thank you for healing today, God. Thank you for healing today. Thank you for healing today, God. Thank you for healing today. Thank you for healing today. Thank you, God, for blowing breeze from heaven. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. We celebrate you. We magnify you. We exalt you. We lift you up. You're high. There's none like you, God. In the name of Jesus. There's none like you. We love you today. Thank you for touching us, God. With a finger of mercy, God. Thank you for touching us, God. With a touch of healing, God. Thank you. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. For a witness in our spirits. That is all right now. It's all right now. Glory to God. It's all right now. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Amazing grace shall always be my song of praise. For it was grace that brought my liberty. I'll never know just why you came to love me so. He looked beyond all my faults and saw my needs. Amazing grace shall always be my song of praise for it was grace that bought my liberty I'll never know just why he came to love me so he looked beyond all my faults and saw my need. I shall forever lift my eyes to Calvary to view the cross where Jesus died for me. How marvelous the grace that caught my Falling so, he looked beyond all my faults and saw my need. I shall forever lift my eyes to Calvary to view the cross where Jesus died for me. How marvelous the grace that caught my falling soul. He looked beyond all my faults. He ministered to my knees. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. 
Hallelujah. Let's bless God for who He is. Hallelujah. Come on, come on, come on. Oh Lord, man, that sounds like it. We were blessing um the the ice cream man or something. Come on, bless the Lord for just who He is. Yeah, bless Him for just who He is. Hallelujah. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah.